Now you know, B-Dubs has been challenging himself lately. I've been challenging, challenging myself to do some things that I don't normally do. Do some fantasy style things instead of realistic things. Try to build, big, build bigger things instead of smaller things. You know, most of the things that I build, like look at these little houses. These, have all, these are all really small. I'm stretching myself and it's turning into some really good stuff. I'm liking that process. We're going to build even bigger today. We're going to stretch ourselves and we're going to, I challenge myself to build big, but in the meantime, off Cramry, B-Dubs did a little something. Over the last week, I decided, you know what? It's time to start working on the village that's going to act as our storage system. And I thought, oh, I'll just do a little bit. You know, maybe I'll get the terrain started. And then that evolved into maybe a little building and then some more building and some more building, and I just kept building, and I did basically like an episode or two worth of building all off camera, and I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm really happy with the progress that we made. So it all starts here, and all of this is all work in progress. WIP. Uh, we're just getting foundation stuff in, and everything is subject to change and expansion. So we're going to deal with a little bit of a transition, you know, with this whole village being the houses being smaller and stuff. That's going to be fine. That's going to work out perfectly fine. We're going to keep the same scale. Scale is different than size. Um, so this is the scale. A door is always going to be too tall. <laughs> That's scale. Size is a door would be like four or five tall um, or scale. Yeah, don't worry about it. Anyway. This is our intersection right here. An intersection from the village to the industrial area, which will be filled in with all of the farms and things that we use to make the items that we store in our village storage system. But then here is the path down. I chose this location as the path down into the village because I often look at this big archway. This is our focal piece, right? We did those birds last episode and... Um, a couple episodes we've made this thing. This is a great angle to view this from. You get kind of a three-quarter view, so you see a little bit of the sides and the front, and I think it's nice. So this is the place I want to come down at, at an angle. Now, this, this thing was very hard to make. This is an archway that is diagonal at a 45-degree angle and 45 degrees going down. For what it is, I think it looks nice. I had to add some variation and some things in there to trick the eye so it doesn't feel like it's slanting or sloping. And I think it looks pretty good. We'll walk through there in a second. But the way I figured that out is basically I just built it straight like this. And then I moved each section over like so. And then I moved each section up like a so. And of course, that didn't work flawlessly. But... I was able to kind of then get a general idea of the shape and work it out from there. I'll clean this up later, but let's go through here. This, I made this and I worked so hard on getting this here for a raisin. The raisin is, it is a picture frame. If this was all just wide open, uh, it'd still look cool. I want to have trees in here to block eyesight. Believe it or not, I want to block views of things because when you come through here, I want this to be like a picture frame. I want this to be my picture that I see. You get kind of a feeling and a ooh moment when you see that tower with that cliff off in the distance and then this tree, which we'll talk about this tree in a second. You know, these little uh, statue guys that we have up there, we're integrating them down here as well. There's so many notes I've taken on this that I want to talk to you guys about, but we have here a little bit of a stairway that goes down and out this way and down and out this way. So it kind of wraps around and it creates this little garden area. Both of these pathways go down towards this tree here. And we have this little garden area here with some benches and some cool trees and potentially a monument to something. I don't have anything super monumental uh, to, to place there yet, but we'll see eventually. But with these trees, I kind of, I like these trees. They're kind of smaller, like dogwood trees, maybe. 
But I did something interesting on this one. I'm just trying something out that I want to show you. If you get enough leaves in it, you can put a moss block in there and then put a grass on top. Now this biome has kind of bluish grass, so it throws it off just a little bit, but it still adds to that bushy texture on the trees. Notice how much I talk and how, how fast I'm talking because I'm very excited about all of this. Now this floor is recycled. This is all recycled flooring from the terrain that we tore out. I tore out all, I had so much dirt that I was able to take it over to my mud place, mud making place, make a bunch of mud, I got wheat coming on demand, and I was able to make a bunch of packed mud and then get some brown mushrooms in here as well. So we have a kind of a mix of like brown mushrooms and packed mud and packed mud bricks. And every once in a while, I'm putting brick patterns. You know how in cartoons, they'll just draw like uh, they'll draw like a flat wall and then just every once in a while put these little lines in here to signify that this is brick. That's kind of what I'm doing here as well. I'm also, you know, some path blocks to show that this is where people walk and stuff like that. I'm having the grass come in a little bit, and this is how I've been doing it. Uh, whenever we're transitioning towards grass, I use mossy cobblestone. We have tons of moss, thanks to our moss shop there in the background. And I'm also do using, like, gravel and uh, some cobblestone to kind of blend in a little bit of uh, stone texture to make it not look so perfect. I worked a very long time on trying to find out the perfect lamp design. What's a great street lamp design? And I was messing about quite a bit with like redstone lamps and a lot of cool things. I came up with one cool design. Actually, let me show you. Okay, so furnace minecart. This is the key to making this work and making this look cool. I'm, I'm showing you this because some of you may be able to use this at some point. But uh, I think I can... Ideally, we'd use different uh, different trapdoors here, something you could see through. But if we raise all these up and then we break this, this furnace minecart is not going to fall all the way because the hitbox of the, of the wall, look at that. It comes up that high. So that falls to about there. And then if we sneak this wall right here, we put a piston above that. We'll have to jam it down into the furnace minecart like so. And you get this shape that you can't normally get otherwise. It's kind of this tiered shape that you see at the top of a lot of, a uh, lot of like street posts and stuff like that. We don't, it's like a reverse hopper. My daughter, Ari, she's always said, why don't hoppers go upside down? That would be really cool. But just imagine that, that uh, the, the right type of blocks in there, right? And you could even put some, I just borrowed some from right there, just some iron like that to pull that out. And you got this kind of a cool, uh, lamppost design, pick the right colors and stuff like that, but you, it's pretty cool. It was just looking too bulky down here in our area. I felt like we needed something a little thinner, and this was working out well. I might make them one shorter. I think that's a good height, though. I think that works. I'm not really worried about mob spawning and stuff like that, but now, this tree here. I worked very hard on this tree. I had a tree design kind of worked out with wool where I was just kind of making some cool spindly shapes and all kind of wrapping around each other and stuff. And I thought, man, a petrified tree, like an old petrified tree that meant something to the city or the village would be a cool centerpiece in, in my brain house. Initially, when I first made it, I made it all out of coral, which we got from the end of last episode. We went out to the coral reef very, very far away, and I cleared out a huge area. I got so many shulker boxes full of dead coral. So I thought, let's put it to use. Let's build a tree out of it, because I think the fire coral right there, that makes a nice looking like dead tree bark. Uh, but... It was all kind of blending together and looking like a big blob. So I started putting andesite, still not enough contrast. Start putting diorite, still not. Now it's now it's maybe too much contrast. Put a little acacia log in there to pull it the, down towards the shadows. Still not great. Still not great. I'm thinking two things. <laughs> I like it. I think it looks cool. In this place, the backdrop is gray. So it's just kind of blending in. We'll see. It might need to be bigger and taller.
to go along with our big build challenge. But for the moment, it's going to stay. I think it looks kind of cool in the right place. I think it would be great. And maybe this is the right place. We'll see. The terrain, I'm making a little bit different as we get closer. More moss more uh, greenery coverage and stuff like that as we get in but i'm kind of having to be careful with how that blends in because it can look a little too busy but once you're in here i think it's nice uh but we're going to build something now we need we can't build this whole thing without having a building in here and i think right here we will place one and we're going to place a greenhouse I'm sorry, not a greenhouse, a horticulturist. Ah, your word of the day is horticulture, by the way. But once we place this building in here, we're going to really feel uh, what we're dealing with as far as the size of this area, okay? Uh, we're going to build bigger. This area, these buildings will just be bigger buildings, okay? Not bigger scale, but just bigger size. It's going to shrink this thing. This bridge, this large archway, has felt huge. And I've seen even some artists, some fan art, that have kind of made some art of this area and uh, the potential village. Beautiful art, by the way. Thinking the same way that I was, that you could have a bunch of buildings throughout here. Believe it or not, <laughs> you might only be able to fit five right in this area. Maybe, maybe, maybe like seven. But that's okay. If it shrinks this thing in the background, that's okay. Then then it just gives us room to make something even bigger. But one thing I want to do with this build, instead of just making a building, just a plain old building, I want to include and attach to it a huge solarium. I think solarium. On the other word of the day. Solarium? Is that the big thing with uh, glass? It's all glass. I've tried to make those from time to time. Like just over here with our honey shop. This is a little bit of a solarium, I think. Forgive me if I'm using the terminology wrong. It's a little mini one, but you don't really get the full feel. I want to do a big boy, a real big one. And of course, I want to use a bunch of my favorite block. If we use, for the accent block, we use waxed weathered copper. That's it. That's my favorite block ever. Waxed weathered copper. I think it's going to look really nice, but... I think it's only time now. I think it's time. I've updated you on everything I've done. B-dubs has been a busy boy. It's time now to start building our horticulturists. But we're going to do that after we take a quick commercial break. Man, what a lucky guy. This father of two young daughters is able to spend more quality time with his children. And it's all thanks to Squarespace. He was supposed to be making a website for his friend, but he got it done so fast that now he has time to play Daddy Target Practice. Thanks to the large collection of custom templates that Squarespace has, he was able to quickly find the perfect look for the website. With Squarespace, he embedded videos, created a members area, and connected their social media accounts, and it was done in half the time it would have taken him if he did it on his own. On top of that, they'll be getting access to analytics that lets them know how much traffic they're getting, where it's coming from, and a whole lot more. So be like this guy, and check out the link in the description, or go to squarespace.com B00100 to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. the view just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? Oh, baby, B-dubs built a thing. 
We have so, so many things to talk about with this, but I am, I'm thrilled. Every time I do something like this, I can put the big bridge in there. I was like, oh, I'm so happy I have this in my world. Or the tugboat. I'm so happy this is in my world. This. Now, I am very, very happy this is in my world. Actually, before we go down, up there, <laughs> this is, this is where all my leaf storage is. I keep, well, the one empty barrel out of all of them. I keep all my leaves. I've I collected a bunch of leaves from trees and stuff. I've kept them all up there. That's part of the reason why we need this. Of course, all the other farm stuff and everything that I have, I need to have a place to put it. I'm working my way out of my, um, my chest monster on the hill there. But before we dive into this build and exactly what's going on there, oh, and all the goodies inside, I w this is something I meant to talk about with the tree. You know, these mangrove roots, they're the only, like, transparent leaf-looking block that connects to fence gates and stuff. Like, this wall, it'll connect to that, which is actually, you can kind of force some more cool shapes with trees and stuff, so I think... I might make some brown leaf trees at some point. I think that's really cool. Like, look at this. You need to put a moss block to make that connect. But if I put that there, look, it doesn't connect to the leaves, but it connects to this. That's cool. But this is cooler. Oh, feel, just feel of it. Feel of this view, would you? You come around here and then, oh, you got this big old huge greenhouse horticulturists. Now, there's some things that we need to keep keep an eye on. And just look for these little details as we go, okay? This roof edge. Notice I have fence gates here, here, and here. Originally, when I was planning this, I had fence gates all the way up. But it looks too same-samey, repetitive. So you have to break it up. So I put a fence in there. And a trap door in there. And a slab in there. That rule applies to everything in this game. Like, look at this. I'm using this brain coral for the sidewalks. But look, look at all that brain coral. All of that. I mean, it looks fine, but it, you can see the pattern. You can see the re repetition. So ev just all it takes, ew, jump, is just a couple. Let's just break it up with just three, okay? And already better. Look at, look at what happened. It looks so much better just with that little breakup. We, I did this all throughout. Whenever something was repeating, I'd break it up with a variant. So, uh, let's look at this outside here. Here is a really cool thing. Look at this little outside bench thing. I'm going to show how you how to make it right now, okay? Actually, powered rails are better for this. I don't think it'll work without powered rails. But you can put a pot on that and then put that there. That fall down. Now not fall down. It fall down still! But basically, if you do it with a powered rail, it's like the brakes, so it doesn't let it fall down, and it looks like a cool, like, angled display. Not many ways to do that in Minecraft. Also, plant in boats. Plant some plants and then uh, drive a boat over it. This is great for sweetberry bushes as well, but I don't have any, like, within 11,000 blocks of me. I mean, you'll see some faraway details, like the there's a water wheel up there on the roof. To try to break up the roof pattern and stuff with just some water flowing in, feeding some pipes that we'll see once we get into the greenhouse. As we walk up, we've got a little bit of a melon situation, and we have a little koi pond here, which, since I was out at the tropical ocean, I got myself some koi fish. Let's see. I forget what they look like. All different, kind of. I think they stay alive a little bit better now than they used to. But now we'll have some troppy fish in there. Now, before we go inside, I'm going to warn you. This interior, it took me like a week. So when you look at it and you think, man, I could never do that because you're going to think that it's that good. Uh, it, it, it takes a very, 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 very long time. Okay? But it's nice. I pray, I prepare you. Uh, so take a very long time and and uh, you'll you'll do a great job like I. Okay. Uh, a couple of pine trees flanking and cool rug that um, I've been kind of working on some cool rug shapes. You're going to see some similar things to my Hermitcraft base with like the stacked chests. I think that's a really cool look. And then a couple of like stone pedestal things to put some plants on. And then, of 
course, we got this bay window out here, which I'm realizing bay windows make everything look cool. Along with our logo, we'll look at that in a second. But even still, after all the time I put into this thing, still not done. <laughs> I haven't put anything in this little side room. There's so much to do. But here we are in the main. Oh, yeah, baby. In the main area. So there's a lot to kind of talk about. And I don't think I can talk about everything. I've tried to include like some big monstrous plants. You got to use your imagination a little bit. But it's in there. Huge pile of pumpkins and watermelons. Uh, I I wanted to put something a little bit different, but that's pretty bright. I don't know if I love that. Um, but just, yeah, lots of stuff all over the place. And then, you know, some areas for like regular storage and whatnot. This upstairs, it does go upstairs, but it doesn't do anything special. Okay. We're just up here. We can see the roof trusses and that's it. Nothing crazy. But there's a, you know, we're using that boat trick again. And then even these hopper mine carts work as like little mini pots. We don't have the bigger pots yet, so it's got to get creative. Uh, and then, you know, a little shelf with the mushrooms on top. Just lots of cool little things all over the place doing that um, that trick again. But now, here, hoo-ha, hoo-ha. We're just a third of the way through this tour. Here is where I'm going to store a lot of my leaves. And I'm prepping myself for the pink cherry blossoms that are coming in 1.20. Going to have uh, swap that out to cherry pot, pink cherry blossom leaves. But over here, this is like a propagule, propagation station. So you take little leaf cuttings and put them and hang them in front of a water, or, or hang them in water in front of a window. Uh, so that's kind of what that's resembling. But yeah, then that water that's coming in from the water wheel, you know, comes in, goes through all these pipes we imagine, right? But each of these stations, we can see it from up a little higher, has... Different leaf types. So that's birch leaves over there, and I have the sapling next to it to identify it. I like to try to use something other than just item frames to identify things uh, from time to time. So I'll have acacia leaf storage over here. And this is all expandable. Just put, you know, here I got three barrels for jungle leaves. I could do more somewhere else. So that's kind of how this is laid out. This is a spot for bamboo. This is just a random statue to fill this spot. Anyway, now we go down to the next spot. So here's where the science, the, um, the plant science takes place. So there's a little basement uh, hatch outside. You'll see what this is all about. But this is kind of, I've cut some uh, little holes out there and put some torches up to make it look like daylight's coming in there and there and there. So I think that's pretty cool. And then a real dark spot for soil. That doesn't make sense, but it works. I think it looks cool. And then a little station to work on things. You got water pumping down and lights hanging down so you can see everything real good. Don't step on the pots, on the plants. And then over here, this connects to that big, huge white chimney that's on the outside. So I'm thinking, you know, we can use this as like, uh, say it's a dye station or something like that. And potentially put a flower farm in this entrance. There's nothing in there right now. But even this works as like a yellow dye, you know, liquid thing right there. We can't dye water in uh, Java edition. This floor pattern also, I think, is pretty nice. I discovered this while I was working everything out. This is the uh, waxed exposed copper, cut copper, versus the, the mud pack, packed mud bricks. And they kind of work together. I kind of like it. It adds that variance that we were looking for. And I think that looks really good. But yeah, we have, you know. Uh, little water trenches going through as well, uh, feeding all the plants and stuff. This rain's making me nervous. There's a corner over here upstairs that's uh, also not really um, finished. I did some very intricate work on the ceilings. Like I put uh, sheeting, wood sheeting, and then, well, trusses first, then wood sheeting, then the shingles, the deep slate on top of that. But it turned out pretty cool. I like it. Anyway, let's take a look at it. We're going to have to look at the outside after it stops raining. And the rain is stopping now. Just in time for me to give a little lesson again. I want to hammer this home because for builders, if you like building in Minecraft or you want to build cool things, this is the lesson. This is the core of everything. And we're going to look at some more things that show this off as well. This pi These pillars, too tall, too apart. 
all the way down. And that has its place, but not here. Okay? If you want to make it more interesting, you change it up. Like a so. See how this looks more interesting? It's the same thing. It's every two. And I could have even mixed that up. There's so many ways, just with this small example, so many different block types that you can change everything. I could have made these closer, could have made stairs, could have made even more t material variants, but we kick that one back that way, put a wall on that one, make this one fall over, kick that one over, make it shorter, make that one taller. These little things, there's so many things that you can do in this game to just throw a little bit of interest into all of the repetition. And I'll show you more on the roof in my perfect fly cam. Hello, gorgeous me. So most of this roof is just, I think this brick makes a really cool roof, the deep slate brick, but every once in a while, stair. Every once in a while, different block variant. Every once in a while, basalt. You know, just some changes. Even these four windows right here. These ones, kind of the same, but this one has a sign on it. This one's got a sign. This one's down. These, are, these have wood on top. All kind of different. Here's a really good view of how this roof edge kind of changes all along the way. It looks great from here. It looks fantastic. It's perfect job. <laughs> perfect job. But it's broken up, which makes it look even more interesting. There's that cellar door that I was talking about, by the way. This is all work in progress. I don't know what this terrain is going to do. So it's just kind of carved out there right now. Uh, but wanted just like a, a basement door from the side there. Doing that in the least. Oh, hello, you. Good looking. Uh, but there's so many other areas. I didn't. All the glass is white glass. I had no variation to the glass. There's a lot of areas where I could have made it more messy. But of course, time, time. Uh, there's a thing called diminishing returns. Once you, you get to a point to where it's like, yeah, you can put a ton more time in, but uh, not really worth it. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. The fish are still alive. That's nice. I made this little stairway here as well so we can access it. We don't have to go down here and around. We can just go straight and down like this to get to uh, get any of the materials we need. But I purposely kind of put this tree here. Although we like seeing the things we build, I kind of wanted to block. I wanted to do a lot of like blocking the view of certain things because it can be too overwhelming once we walk down here if the, I, I don't want to overwhelm my eyes with too much but i think that makes like a really cool flower on there just using the pink glazed terracotta and then some um amethyst shards and all of that came from this all built out of wool just getting the shape you've heard my famous old phrase if the shape is great Everything, if the shape is great, everything's going to be fine. Don't, you have nothing to worry about. So you can see, I mean, I only blocked out a couple of interesting things that I thought I tried to get a cool shape in and then went detail crazy from there. Once I was like, yep, this is a cool shape. This is a cool profile and everything. Then I start filling out textures and colors and all that stuff. But all of what I built today came from this. We made a huge amount of progress in this episode today. We, all of this, of course, I did off cra ca camera. <laughs> I have some, uh, I have some work to do, some cleanup to do, of course. But let's see this view now. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. I love it. I really want the greenhouse thing to be kind of seen from here. I think that's a really cool angle. But anyway, back to the old drawing board. More work to do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I love you to death, and we'll see you in the next episode.